Welcome. When we start early, we can finish early. Everyone is waiting for the good music and some wine, I guess. Um, I'm going to go through some of our products here, but before going there, introducing some of the current topics of, of the security front today. Uh, first question, obviously, raise your hand if you are using uh, any of our products. Anyone using any HP security products? No? So you don't know what we do. Okay. Any one of you guys, were you following my colleague's presentation earlier today? Anyone? No. There's a vir virgin audience. That's great. I can use same slides here. Tell the same, same stories. No, actually, it's a bit different here. So, so what we are saying, uh, stop looking for the silver bullet. There is no such thing available. You will not fix your environment or anything using a single product or a couple products or anything like that. The world is a little bit more complex than that today. So what we are saying, the standard stuff, we have these people looking for your assets, your money, your intellectual property, your user information, something like that, to get information out of your environment. Uh, you used to think there were guys like this, separate groups, activists, national state players, cyber criminals, that kind of stuff. But the fact is that nowadays they do have an ecosystem. They are sharing information and they are selling and buying services from each other. They have organized, they are specialized and they have been monetizing the process. So it's a real ecosystem, it's a real business out there. So this is the way it works. This is the presentation, some of you might have seen it before, basically saying these are the people trying to get your money out of your network. They are doing the research, and research means that you can use any passive tool like Google to, to get information about you people, your companies, your budget, what compliance you are following, and that kind of things. And they are selling all that resource information for the next step. And here is infiltration. And this means that they will get through your firewalls. So often firewall is blocking connections going there, unless there is something wrong with the firewall. Or if the connection is established here on this side, back to the bad boys, then most often your firewall ports are open and you are not monitoring what's going on there in that traffic because you think that it's a legitimate traffic from your users. And after this has been done, they will be inside of your company doing the discovery and they are getting more information. Once they have found one server, one PC or anything inside your environment, they will get more information out of your system. And this phase here will take several weeks or months before you know about it. We have been preaching about this kill chain several years now. We have had several cases during the years proving this to be a fact. It happens all the time, different places, different countries. They have collected all the possible information about your environment and then they will take the asset, the, uh, the most valuable information out of the system and they will exfiltrate that information to the marketplace. And there they are selling the stuff. So, makes sense, I guess. So, how it works. Shortly, telling here that there was a company, oh, well, there still is a company in the States called Target, selling stuff. They were breached last winter. So, it was like this. Attackers steal some information. And funny enough, and this is first lesson here, it was not the target company network they preached. They preached the wireless network of the company who was taking care of the air condition of those stores. That's how they originally get in. And then they had a way to install first uh, softwares inside the network and they start uh, expanding access and testing a POS malware that is collecting information from the point of sale system, that is user information, credit card information, that kind of stuff. 
So then uh, they made a little bit better version of that one and started to get the stuff out of the I'm sorry, the stuff out, out of there and, and then it, they were disconnected at this point. So basically saying that there was like three months time that they were there in and getting stuff out at the end of the day. So this is from the bad boys side. So what did that company target made wrong here? Well, they made a compliance. In September, they made a compliance certificate that they are compliant by the book for PCI compliance. And obviously they felt safe because now I have done by the book. I should be safe because I'm protecting my things as, as explained in the book. Uh, the bad thing here is that obviously that compliance information is also a book for the bad guys to tell what you have done and not likely not likely done there in your environment because if you are following the manual they might be saying okay let's do something else that is explained and in this manual in the process uh, they found some activity in the network and this is to say that company had quite a many different vendor boxes and softwares in place not every software or every box was implemented to every part of the network. Different softwares, different boxes were different, monitoring different places and collecting information. But even here, when they have all these alerts, story goes that they used to have some of these alerts happening in the team in India offshore team monitoring the activities. And those people told back to US that you have some problems, go and fix it. And after a far while, the people in states told that switch off the alarms because you, we are getting too many of those and nothing is happening in our network. So although any good product in place giving you alarms, if your people are saying that we don't have time, we don't know what to do with these alarms, switch them off you might be breached. And then, early December, Department of Justice in States told to this customer that you are breached and you need to fix this thing. From the money point of view, they were told that 40 million credit cards were stolen, or information of the 40 million credit cards and debit cards. Uh, in Nordic countries, Western Europe, in general, we are talking about that once the value of stolen credit card uh, is about $10. In states, the value of the stolen credit card information is about $1. So basically you could say that they earned $40 million here with this information. And 70 million user or customer records were stolen. What is the value of customer record? I don't know, maybe 10 cents or 1 cents, but still money. So what is the lesson we learned here? It is that they did the research, they found the weak point. It might be out of your control, it's not part of your network, it, it might be one of your partners that has a weak point. They went in Believe me, they had all the firewalls, IPSs, everything in place, different sandboxing mechanisms in place, but they still went in with specialized attacks. They found more information, they had time to test different malwares, how to get the information out there. Then they captured the information and exfiltrated information. And then they made money out of that. From that company point of view, all the main C-level people involved this one were fire, fired. Like CISO, CIO, CEO, all of them were fired during last winter. So what should you do? Think about it. What is your perimeter you need to protect? 
traditionally you are thinking that yes, my internet connection is the place I need to have my firewall. And if I protect that place, my internet connection, I might be safe because the bad boys are coming that way. But what if? If they are using some other route, maybe it's an employee inside of your company giving them an access through your VPN tunnel or something like that. Where is your perimeter? What, what part of the perimeter you need to protect? How to gain visibility into your most valuable part of the network? Once again, some people are saying that, yeah, I need to have an application, next generation firewall with application intelligence in place. That gives you visibility, what's happening in the network level. If it's a known application, and if, if it's going there in the network with known protocols, but what if someone is writing a different version of their protocols, or, or if they're accessing one of the servers or other stuff uh, using other methods than the network? And what you are going to do when you are going in the future with your security concepts. If you are going to implement part of your IT processing in the cloud environment, how you are going to take your current security to the cloud environment? Can you take your firewall box and walk to the Amazon and say, here is my box, put that in your network, I want to monitor my traffic? Or how does that work? And there is obviously a lot of things you need to think about how it goes in the work. So we are doing a lot of here things, making this life better and introducing a couple of the products and saying what are the good things with these products, how they help you guys to make it better. But still, we cannot guarantee that your network will be safe. This is, these are only the part of the solution, the product part. So tipping point is the very old technology since 2001. It was the first uh, IPS product in the market. So pretty much everyone else has been on the market using IDS product or currently they are selling IPS product which are based on the IDS technology. Tipping point has always been uh, built for IPS. And, and the thing with the tipping point is that we are very good for inspecting each and every packet of, in the network level. We also do have a next generation firewall, all the bells and whistles there. We have a research, which is actually much more important than any of the hardware. And then we have centralized management. So simply to understand how we work. So some of the scenarios, you might have a mirror port and you copy your traffic to mirror port, and then you are inspecting with IDS that if there is something wrong with that mirror traffic. And then you might have a report a week later saying that, yeah, I've been breached. We are monitoring the traffic in line all the time. When we are saying that the traffic is dirty, we don't actually know what is dirty traffic. For some things like slammers and those we know for sure, but for other instances, you need to have a policy in place and to say what is kind of dirty for you in that part of the network you are looking with this kind of device. Some companies are saying that using a Dropbox is not allowed to share any customer documents. Then, based on that policy, we would say any Dropbox traffic or activity would be dirty. And we could take that out of the stream, traffic shaping of that, or, or do something else. Just give our arms to the management that someone is doing that kind of activity, which is forbidden. We have the management and we have the service, which is constantly monitoring the activities in, in the world and doing the filters which are applied based on your policies. We are very reliable, very fast and very accurate. So usually when I'm asking from the customers that what is your biggest fear with IPS device and they would say false positive. And that's the history of IDS devices. We are saying that when we are doing the proof of concept on customer networks in line, we don't have false positives. Nobody believes until they see. So tomorrow, 
call back to Santa Monica and ask for proof of concept to see that yourself in your network. We are easy to install. We can be installed less than uh, one hour if coffee is already made and the cables are available and there is no fine tuning needed. So it's out of the box functionality. Why we have done a firewall? Because this is kind of the family tree of the traditional firewalls. They have been stateful firewalls and then they have been decorated to be next generation firewall with fancy reporting and interfaces. Or there has been some side kick paths that are going from, from the UTVM point of view. And story tells, I've heard, that some of these technologies are a bit leaking some of the information because they have some issues with performance and that kind of stuff. So we decided not to go that way because we would be there in the same situation. We took our IPS technology. Same people developed hardware, which is very fast, very capable, and, and still having to IPS function in the box, plus all the next generation, case, next generation functionality on top of that. And we are always inspecting each and every packet. We don't do any whitelisting or anything catching or anything like that. See, we, we know what is going there in the network. Shortly, next generation IPS, uh, up to 20 gig per single box. And uh, one explanation is here that even those devices behind the interfaces, you can have one gig, 10 gig and 40 gig interfaces. Behind the interfaces, the bandwidth is uh, 100 gigabit per second. The number we are saying here is uh, for the traffic that goes to the deep packet inspection and for every packet going deep packet inspection. So usually the speed we have here on the boxes are enough for the purpose, most of the networks. Same way, uh, next generation uh, appliances available currently go from the smallest one up to the big one at the moment. And uh, here we are saying that the, this model is 10 kick, firewall only. And if you turn on the IPS functionality, it will be always at least half of the firewall speed. So today we know that the IPS function turned on, we can do 80% of, of the full box speed, but we have some reserve there if we are going to introduce some new features in the box in the future. So we are guaranteeing that it will be always at least a half. And latency of the boxes is always a good thing. Some people are saying that there is average latencies. We have a fixed latency. So these boxes um, has latency less than 40 mm, microseconds. Here we are talking about 120 microseconds because recognizing the application at the firewall level takes a little bit longer time, but still fast. They share a common management. So you can have a single box of IPS or firewall and there is a local web-based management. But if you have a multiple boxes, then we have a management options, either hardware or the VMware machine. You will have a multi-tenancy and combined reporting for all of your devices in your environment. We are saying that we are simple, effective, reliable. That means that we can be deployed in minutes. I said, I've seen customers doing it without me touching for less than 30 minutes, but I'm usually saying that let's reserve a day. We can have some workshop there and a lunch. It gives you a lot of information, what's happening in your environment. We do have a very good research. So it's not only about the hardware and the speed of the hardware, it's about this research. So some vendors are saying that they have very high bars here they are finding some information and they are saying that they are finding information on the same day like Microsoft is releasing some patches. Well, the thing is, 
they are talking about exploits and they are talking about making fingerprints for those exploits. But you need to have an exploit first, first that you can make a fingerprint. We are in the business that we are finding out the vulnerabilities. So we usually have, we have found most of the vulnerabilities and we have told to Microsoft that they need to fix something. And in the meanwhile, Microsoft is fixing that vulnerability. We have already given a batch in our box to our customers, protecting again that one. And when we have created one vulnerability filter, that will cover all the coming exploits against that vulnerability. So when we have found the vulnerability and made a filter for it, we don't have to worry about the exploits coming later, next week or next year or whatever. It's covered. And this is the difference. The other vendors, they are playing this game of exploits and fingerprints and, and that kind of stuff. We are doing the vulnerabilities. And it's different. So in this business, actually, these are the only companies that do have anything to do and competing with us. We are very reliable, fine, because we don't have any hard disk or anything like that in the box. Uh, we do have a lot of different um, functions. We don't have time to go here in, in detail, but happy to come and talk to you more about it. We have like kill filtering features. We do have uh, Bad boy databases, we know all the bad addresses, malware sites and everything like that are included to the, the devices. We have an integration that we can integrate with other, to for example these vendors that if they have a sandboxing device and they find something extra in your network, we have a sandboxing function, they can tell back to tipping point that it should be blocked, that kind of traffic out of the, out of the environment. And, and some other new technologies we are always introducing there. And, and also some new products in this field is coming out of, of, of end of this year. Uh, generally, visibility to your environment. We are also saying that uh, it doesn't help that if you are monitoring your network traffic only. Because what about if you have a USB stick on your PC and that will give you a malware. It's not network traffic in the first stage. So we are also saying that you need some other tools that you are monitoring your other components in your, inside your environment. And there we have this ArcSide product family. We can monitor anything in your environment and it's not limited to IT devices, servers or networking or anything like that. We can monitor, for example, if you are using your patch to enter the building or something else, even the coffee machine, machine if you want. So then you will see what is happening with your existing devices. So this is extra piece of software you will implement in your environment and you will collect information for each and every existing device in your environment. And then you will gain a visibility combining all that information together, how is your people and networks behaving. So ArcSight starts usually with this one, a log management. If you are still collecting your log files in the Linux box <coughs> for two days or so. That's not usually enough. Here we are talking about you can collect your logs and keep them forever if you have the storage. And then if keeping the logs is not enough, you can easily have SIEM on top of that and giving you correlation and automated alarms if there is something new happening there. Yeah, question? So, you have applications, virus protection, anything? No, I'm asking uh, if we have to go limited to store a lot of logs, are there software uses and the application to minimize the footprint on the latest 
Oh yeah, sure. So the question was is that if, if you are collecting a lot of information, a lot of logs, can we compress the data to save some space? And yes, we can do that. So commonly we are talking about that we have a compression up to 10 to 1. So if we have like physical hard disk of one terabyte, we can store 10 terabytes of the information there. But still, more important is that how long you are going to keep that information and if the information is valuable, if you are supposed to store it anyhow. Because I'm saying 95% of the Windows logs might be crap. <coughs> and then we also have a solution out of the box that you can run your own operation center with the appliance. And also, if needed, we are building the socks for the customers. So we have very large customers around the globe, private sector and governmentals, that we are building socks for them and uh, giving just the keys in hand. So we collect any device, any source, any information, and we can format that for based on your needs. So we are supporting out of the box more, more than 100 vendors, 350, 350 different log formats. And if that is not enough, we can uh, customize, or actually you can customize yourself to any of your lo own log sources, like applications and like that. We can enrich the information and give you more details what the information is for. We have very, very fast search engines. And, and we, as I said, we can store information for a very long time. And correlation, we are talking about here quite often IT security, IT operation and, and compliance and risk management. But remember, we can easily monitor any of the business processes. So we can, for example, monitor if someone is trying to do fraud with your money in the company, or if someone is stealing stuff from your company, if some doctor is giving too much uh, medicine to certain patients or anything like that, anything can be monitored and locked with the tool. <coughs> so, speeds we have up to 100,000 events per second. That's a lot for big companies. We can search up to 2 million events per second. So actually nowadays, with the, we have two weeks ago, we released the version 6, which is even faster. And, and as I said, the analyzing of the process. So it's automated compliance things, and it means that most of the useful cases will start from here. That if you are struggling with the things that someone is doing your auditing, that you're, if your ISO 27000 compliant or if you have a PCI compliance, this can automate the process and give you auditing in hours instead of weeks. So running out of time, and I made some conclusions here now, is that there are best of the breed of products available. Who is the vendor who has the best product for you is something that you need to decide. We like to be there on the table to show how we work, how our products are doing, but if you decide to go with some other vendor, that's fine. That's your choice. You know better. But what we are saying, it doesn't help that if you have the greatest product on the market, if you don't know how to use it, or what to use, or what to do when you see something. Train your people. Understand what you want to do with your security. If they find something, there is an incident, have a process in place. What do you do when you see an incident in your environment? Who to get involved? Do you need external help? Do you go law and enforcement? Something like that. And keep yourself up to date. Learn, practice, tell the same thing to the users and, and the other people in the company. Take the security as a big journey and not as a product. Thank you. Uh, questions? We have some time, yeah? No hands? One hand? Yeah. So the firewall can be implemented for different modes. 
we are calling them as a segment mode, emulating IPS only. Bridge mode, you can have multiple ports as a broadcast domain, and it's still layer two, no IP addresses. And then there is obviously the root routed version and a single arm version for VLAN traffic inspection and that kind of stuff. And all the boxes, uh, firewall boxes, they have inbuilt next generation firewall with inbuilt IPS. It's included. Yep. Yeah, simultaneously all the modes in the same box, no problem. Yes, you can. Um, from the traffic point of view, you will run some issues if you have uh, same traffic, same IP addresses coming multiple times from different, yeah, you know that trick, but uh, that's something to avoid for, for all, the, all the boxes in the purpose. But yes, you can. Anything else? Don't worry, it's about time to have some entertainment and we will be there hanging around. So if you can think something, please come back to us and ask a question there privately. Thank you.